Hello friends, this video on heredity and evolution part 3 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. The Mendel's experiment that what he actually did. Now we all know that in sexual reproduction there are two parents involved and both of these parents contribute equally to the traits which are seen in the child. Both contribute, both parents will contribute. For example, in human beings, the father and the mother, both will contribute something to the child. That is why the child will have some features similar to his father, some features similar to his mother, right? Now, Mendel with his experiment with the pea plants found out the principles based on which it can be guessed how characters will be inherited or passed from parents to offspring. So he performed a couple of experiments with those peas and he uh, arrived at certain principles which became the principles of inheritance and based on those principles the phenomenon of inheritance happens not only in peas but also in human beings in all living organisms. Right. So now let us see what he actually did. So he took a tall, he, he first of all chose different characters of both parents. Right. So he took one pea plant which was tall. So which character did he choose? He chose height. So he took one plant with tall height. He took another plant which was dwarf that is which was very short in height. So height was a characteristic which was chosen by Mendel. So height was the contrasting characteristics which was chosen by Mendel. So he took two plants of two different heights and then he cross pollinated. What is cross pollination? In our previous lesson, I have spoken about pollination, right? So how reproduction happens in plants? For the first step is pollination, right? So the pollen grains are the male sex cells for plants. So the pollen grains will have to be transferred to the ovary where the female sex cell or the egg cell lies. So cross pollination means the pollen grain will be transferred from one plant to the other plant. So what he did pollen grain of one plant was transferred to the flower of the other plant. So the pollen grains was dusted over the stigma of the dwarf plant. For example, from here the pollen grains were taken. Where are pollen grains located? They are present inside the flower. Where inside the flower? Inside the anther, right? So these pollen grains were taken and they were dusted over the flowers of this plant. So on the stigma. You remember all this we discussed in our previous lesson. So the pollen grains, once they reach the stigma, they will be able to reach the ovary through the style. Right? So that is how cross pollination was done. Now what was the result of this cross pollination? So he cross pollinated tall pea plants with dwarf pea plants. So the plants with bigger height were called tall. The plants with extremely small height were known as dwarf. And the result was that he saw that all the plants were tall. So he was quite surprised. So when, when we feel that both parents contribute, that is our assumption. Now that is our assumption. At that time he was thinking, when there are two parents involved in the process of reproduction, why is it that on cross-pollinating them, all the kids resemble one parent? That means all of them were tall. At least some of them should have been short. But that is not the case. So all the plants were tall. So now this was known as the first generation, right? So this was the first filial generation that is F1 generation. That is the term which is used in genetics. F1. What is F1? It means first filial generation. What is the term filial? Filial denotes offspring. Filial means offspring. That is child. So that is why the first child generation because this is the first time these plants were cross pollinated and they gave birth through children. So this was the first filial generation. Now what did he do next? He took one of these plants. So one of these plants from the F1 generation, he took one of them and then self pollinated this plant. That means the pollen grain of the same plant, it was pollinated with itself. So that is self-pollination. That means pollen grain of this flower was passed to the ovary of this flower only. 
So the plant was self-pollinated and then it was found that out of four, three were tall but one was short. Now here this four and three are not the exact number of plants. It, it is talking about the ratio. For example, when he would have actually counted the numbers, maybe the numbers would have come something like, say out of the hundred plants which were produced, out of those hundred plants, maybe 20 of them were dwarf and the remaining 80 were all tall, right? So he is just talking about the ratio. So he saw that one fourth of the plants were dwarf. So now he was all the more surprised because now in this case, if you look here, there is no dwarf plant involved, right? So this basic experiment led him to think a lot over this that why is it and this generation which is now created is known as the f2 generation that is the second filial generation so the second generation of offsprings right so in the first generation that is the f1 generation you saw that only one trait was displayed one trait of the two parents was displayed whereas when the any one of the plant of the F1 generation was self-pollinated, it was seen that one-fourth of the F2 generation showed characteristics which was not at all displayed in F1 generation. So this characteristic, I mean after this F1 generation was formed, it, it appeared as if this characteristic has already vanished. That means the dwarf property of three plants is gone, it is vanished. But again on a, in the F2 generation, the same characteristic comes up. So this was a big surprise for Mendel. Now with the help of this experiment, now we will see that how Mendel derived the principles of inheritance. So what it was his conclusion from this experiment? His conclusion was that the F1 generation, that is the first filial generation gave all tall plants, but the second filial generation gave 75% tall plants and 25% short plants. That's because total I mean, three-fourths of the plants were tall and one-fourth of the plants were short, right? So from this, Mendel got, Mendel got this idea that the dwarf characteristic did not vanish. Even though in the F1 generation, it was not seen, but it did not vanish. It was also carried and it also remained hidden somewhere in the plants. So it was also there, but it, it did not get expressed. Now, why it did not get expressed and how it was expressed in the F2 generation, all those things we will come later. But looking at the results of this experiment, all that Mendel understood was that the dwarf characteristic is not vanished. It is also carried somewhere and it is also hidden somewhere in the F1 generation. And that is why it got expressed in the F2 generation. Right? So, Based on this experiment, we will see how Mendel described so many other things. So from this, what is what was his conclusion? Two copies of a trait are inherited in each sexually reproducing organism. So two copies of a trait are inherited, right? That means in this case, what were the trait? One trait was tallness and the other trait was dwarfness. So this means that both tallness and dwarfness are inherited in each of the offspring. But not both of them got expressed. So only one of them got expressed whereas the other remained hidden. But that doesn't mean that only one is passed on or only one trait is inherited. That is why it is said two copies of a trait are inherited. That means whether it is, to, what, which is the trait here? The trait here is height. So we are talking about height. So in this case, we have two parents, right? One is the tall plant, the other one is the short plant. So these are the two parents. And what is the trait that we have here? The trait which we are talking about here is height. So what are the two copies of height which are getting inherited here? So one copy of height from tall plant, one copy of height from the dwarf plant. So what copy of height will come from the tall plant? Tallness. And what copy of height will come from the dwarf plant? Dwarfness. So that means two copies of one trait will be inherited in each sexually reproducing organism. So that means to the child, 
Let us suppose if this is the child, this child will get one copy from father, one copy from mother. So that means both the uh, parents will contribute a copy of each and every trait to the offspring. So that was a major conclusion of this experiment. Now the question is, which are the traits which get expressed and which are the traits which do not get expressed? And why is there a difference? Why does one trait get expressed whereas the other trait doesn't? So let us talk about those two kinds of... Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.